Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, I'm going to be discussing the World of Tears series, written by Philip Jose Farmer. I finished reading this series a few weeks back, and I thought it would be a good time to do an episode on it while it was still fresh in my mind. Besides the novels written by Philip Jose Farmer, I'll also be discussing World of Tears fiction written by other authors since Farmer's passing. I'm not going to be giving away any spoilers in this episode. I'm going to give you a nice idea of what the World of Tears series is about, though. First, I'll start off with an overview and give a little background information on the series. The main theme of the series revolves around an advanced race of beings known as Lords. They're also called Thoen, and Former refers to them early on as the Vernern. He abandons the term Vernern, though, and sticks with calling them either Lords or Thoen in the rest of the books. In this episode, I will just be calling them lords to make it easier. The lords are advanced beings who are human in appearance. However, they have at their fingertips vastly advanced technology. This includes immortality without aging past their prime. Being able to construct artificial pocket universes. Traveling between universes via gates, bioengineering, terraforming, gravity manipulation, the list goes on. It should be noted that within each artificial pocket universe, there is only one planet, but the planet can have orbiting satellites. It's revealed early on that the Lords have access to this technology and know how to use it. But over the years, they have forgotten how to create more of the advanced technology. For instance, the ability to create new pocket universes has been lost, which makes all of the existing pocket universes and the worlds within them of the highest value to the Lords. One such pocket universe is Alof Methbin, which is the name the Lords call the World of Tears. The World of Tears is the main pocket universe the series takes place in, but the characters do travel to other pocket universes as well. The World of Tears gets its name because it's not spherical in shape. It's basically shaped like a wedding cake. Due to the finite amount of pocket universes, the Lords attempt to break into other Lords' universes and attempt to kill each other so they can take over the other worlds for themselves. The Lords are an ancient, ruthless, and conniving race, and you can't really trust any of them at face value. They are also very cautious and intelligent. As in the great game the Lords play, it is truly survival of the fittest. For the names of the Lords, Farmer took inspiration from William Blake's mythology. I didn't realize this until later on in the series, and it's by no means necessary to know anything about William Blake or his work in order to enjoy these books. It's just interesting to know he used the characters' names from Blake's work for the Lords. I'll talk a little bit about the first book to set the stage. The first book is called The Maker of Universes. I'll briefly touch on the rest of the books, but like I said, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. So I'll kind of keep what I say about all the subsequent books in the series to a minimum. The Maker of Universes stars Thomas Wolfe. He's a senior citizen living on Earth, but he gets transported to the World of Tears after a gate to another world opens up in the basement of a home he's looking to purchase. At first, he hears some musical notes. Then the gate opens inside of a closet. 
A long-haired youth sitting on a toadstool-shaped rock is blowing on a horn, and he sees Wolf. The youth is surrounded by fuzzy creatures who appear to be after him. The youth throws the horn to Wolf through the gate before it closes. For future reference, this youth is named Kikaha, and like Wolf, he's from Earth. Kikaha's real name is Paul Janice Finnegan. Philip Jose Farmer included Kikaha in the Wold Newton family tree in Doc Savage, his apocalyptic life. According to Doc Savage, his apocalyptic life, Kikaha is the grandson of Phileas Fogg, and his cousin is none other than Richard Henry Benson, the Avenger. Another of Kikaha's relations is his cousin, Robert Blake, who is a Cthulhu Mythos character created by H.P. Lovecraft. Robert Blake is a tribute to writer Robert Block, who was friends with not only H.P. Lovecraft, but Philip Jose Farmer, too. Robert Blake and Robert Block are both writers, and their birthdays are both April 5th, 1917. The description of Robert Blake's writing career in Doc Savage, His Apocalyptic Life sounds very similar to Robert Bloch's and has references to weird fiction magazines and Miskatonic University. Robert Blake's father is William Blake II, who may have been descended from William Blake himself. William Blake is the writer who Farmer took inspiration from when creating the World of Tears series. But the claims of William Blake II must be look at, looked at with a skeptical eye, according to Farmer. I love how Farmer weaves in reality, fiction, and fiction based on reality together in that section of the Wool Newton family tree. I'll put a link to the Wool Newton family tree from Doc Savage, His Apocalyptic Life, in the show notes. And I'll highlight Kikaha's immediate family within it. Kikaha plays a big role in this first book, Maker of the Universes, but it's really Wolf's story. Maker of the Universes is the most Edgar Rice Burroughs pulp-inspired tale out of all the World of Tears books. It's kind of John Carter-like. Wolf remembers the notes he heard playing before the gate opened and ends up repeating them in traveling to the world of tears with the horn. Wolf ends up on the Garden of Eden Garden of Eden level, the bottommost tier on the world of tears. He starts to de-age back to his physical prime. He also meets a woman, Chryses, and later hooks back up with Kikaha, and through a series of events He's put into conflict with the planet's lord. Here's just a brief overview of the geography of the world of tears. I mentioned the bottom level is the Garden of Eden-like tier. It's called Okeanos, and people from ancient Greece inhabit it. The next tier up from that is the Amerin tier, which is inhabited by people from prehistoric north and Central America. One tier up from that is the Drachland tier, a tier inhabited by people from medieval Germany. The next tier up is the Atlantis tier. The topmost level is the Palace of the Lord of the Planet. In addition to the World of Tears, there is also a moon in this pocket universe. But I don't want to go too much into detail on it, as it plays a part in one of the middle books of the series. I'll just say this. Edgar Rice Burroughs fans will appreciate it especially. I won't go into any other details about Maker of the Universes or the series, as I think a broad general overview is probably better than getting too descriptive about each individual book. I think it's best you discover what happens for yourself. 
I know I enjoyed exploring the world of tears as I worked my way through the books, and I think you will too. I will say, though, that after the second book, The Gates of Creation, the series shifts from Wolf to Kikaha, and Kikaha becomes the main character of the series. Here's a map or reading order of the series. I'll also include this in the show notes. Once you've finished The Maker of Universes, you want to move on to Book 2, The Gates of Creation. This one still stars Wolf. Then after that, you want to move on to Book 3, A Private Cosmos. This is where Kikaha takes center stage. Following this, move on to Book 4, Behind the Walls of Terra, which also features Kikaha. This is followed by The Lava Light World, and again this stars Kikaha. The Lava Light World is followed by Book 6, Red Orc's Rage. Now this is important. Some people don't consider Red Orc's Rage a main World of Tears novel, but I have to tell you, it's definitely part of the main series, and is truly book number 6 in the series. You want to read this before you read Book 7, More Than Fire. This is a fantastic, psychological, coming-of-age tale set on Earth that ties into the World of Tears series. This is a book that I'll be devoting an entire episode on in the future, as it's one of my favorite books. In a nutshell, it's about a form of therapy where Patience Roleplay is a character from Farmer's World of Tears series. This book stars Jim Grimson, who chooses to roleplay as the character Red Orc. Red Orc's an antagonist in the World of Tears series. Definitely read Red Orc's Rage before you finish up with the final book in the series. Book 7, More Than Fire, starring Kikaha. This is the conclusion to the World of Tears series, so far. Once you've read all of Farmer's novels, don't worry, you're not out of World of Tears stories just yet. There have been four World of Tears short stories written for you to enjoy. I would recommend you have all of the World of Tears series by Farmer read before you read these, with the exception of no Trees of Earth by David Bischoff. If you want, you could read that one between books 1 and 2 and not have anything spoiled for you. Here's an overview of the short stories and when and where they have been published. No Trees of Earth by David Bischoff was published in the worlds of Philip Jose Farmer 1, Protean Dimensions. This was published by Meteor House Press in 2010. This is a Wolf, Crisis, and Kikaha story set between books 1 and 2 of the series. Next up is The Wolf That One Hears by John Mark and Randy Lafissier. This was published in the Worlds of Philip Jose Farmer 2 of Dust and Soul which was published by Meteor House in 2011. This is a tale set before Wolf travels to the world of tears, when he's still a college professor. The next short story is Devil's Dark Harvest by Christopher Paul Carey, published in The Avenger, The Justice Inc. Files, which was published by Moonstone Books in 2011. Remember how I mentioned that, according to Farmer, Kikaha and Richard Henry Benson, the Avenger, are cousins? Christopher Paul Carey took that as an inspiration for this story, and has written a World of Tears-related tale featuring the Avenger. The World of Tears elements are right here on the surface, but as is typical when dealing with the Lords, nothing is quite what it seems. Once you've read all of the World of Tears books, read this short story and see if you can crack the code. The next short story 
is called Trickster of the Apes by S.M. Sterling, which was published in the worlds of Philip Posey Farmer III, Portraits of a Trickster. It was published by Meteor House in 2012. This is a story about Kikaha's first adventure on the World of Tears. There was also a French role-playing game called Thoen. It's based on the World of Tears books, and there is a French website you can visit to check it out. You can use Google Translate to help you read the pages, if you're not familiar with the French language. Besides text, there's some nice art on there, too. But take everything on there with a grain of salt in regards to the mythology of the lords. Not all of it is canon. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. I would also like to recommend The Other Log of Phileas Fogg by Philip Posey Farmer. As I mentioned, according to Farmer, Kikaha is a grandson of Phileas Fogg. I'm sure you'll become a fan of Kikaha after you meet the fun-loving Hoosier. If you're interested in his heroic lineage, definitely check out The Other Log of Phileas Fogg. Titan Books reprinted it as their first installment of the World Newton Universe series, and it's readily available in paperback and ebook format. The Titan Books edition is the definitive and preferred edition, as it has some great bonus materials by Win Scott Eckert. Win looks at the Phileas Fogg family tree with a special eye toward Kikaha's lineage, which should interest World of Tears fans. Wynn's essay is ultimately a piece of creative mythography that posits the relationship between Phileas Fogg, Paul Janice Finnegan, and Philip Pose Farmer himself. Wynn also includes a handy chronology as well. If you're a World of Tears fan, definitely check out the other log of Phileas Fogg for some more Philip Pose Farmer heroic science fiction goodness. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at Pulp Crazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.